Welcome to a new vlog. Today I'm going to show you some techniques that you can use when doing board level temperature measurements. Typically you'll want to measure either the ambient temperature or the system or component temperature. Depending on one of these goals you are going to follow different design rules to achieve that. And to better illustrate the problems I have these three PCBs which have the same electrical circuit but with different layouts on the PCB. But before we continue I have to mention the sponsor of this video which is lcsc.com an electronics component distributor they have supplied everything you see here the PCBs and the parts needed to assemble these boards needed for the video. You should definitely check out their website you will be pleasantly surprised by the stuff you find in their inventory you will find everything you need to build complete boards like these. The boards consist of an ESP8266 and a digital temperature sensor and you might expect that since all three boards are placed so close together they should all indicate the same temperature in the environment they're in. But that is not the case as we can see on this graph that I have uh, prepared we are getting three different temperatures and only one of them is close to the actual ambient temperature measured with another thermometer. So why is that happening? Well the answer lies in the layout of the PCB and that includes component placement, copper planes and various other elements on the PCB. Let's consider our goal was to measure the ambient temperature. I'm gonna start with the red PCB which is the worst example of layout for measuring ambient temperature. Why is that you might ask? Well for several reasons. First the placement of the sensor is right next to other active components that will generate heat. I have my 3.3 volt linear regulator which will dissipate heat in this area of the board and I also have the ESP8266 system on chip which will generate its own heat. Second reason the board is full of ground planes made out of copper. Copper has good thermal conductivity so the PCB itself will transfer the heat around and below our sensor with ease. My temperature sensor is placed right between these two so instead of measuring the ambient temperature it will measure the temperature of the PCB which is greatly influenced by these two active components. Here is a thermal image of the red PCB. As you can observe in the image there is a hot spot in the PCB and unfortunately our sensor is placed right there in the hot spot. Now let's take a look at the yellow PCB which is somewhere in the middle in terms of our expected goal for measuring ambient temperature. On this PCB I have moved the sensor away from the two components which are producing heat. I have the sensor as far away as possible from those but why aren't we getting values close to the ambient temperature? The value is better and closer than with previous red PCB but still not good enough. That's because we still have big copper planes which run from the heat producing components right up to our sensor. The copper planes are conducting heat to our temperature sensor through the PCB and instead of measuring the actual ambient temperature the reading is still influenced by the heat the board itself produces. So then we move up to our green PCB which addresses both issues. We have the sensor placed as far away as possible from the two components which are producing heat on the PCB. The copper planes stop well before reaching the sensor area to prevent any conduction of heat through the PCB and additionally there is this cutout in the PCB which prevents any heat from being conducted through the PCB to the area where the sensor is placed. Now depending on how much thermal mass you have on the small area holding the sensor you can play with how fast your sensor reacts to changes in the environment. Having a very low thermal mass with a very thin PCB will cause the sensor to quickly react as any change in the air will quickly be transferred to the sensor because there will be no thermal mass to take up on that change of temperature. Having a small copper plane there and maybe a larger area on the board up to the cutout will cause the sensor to react slower because it will take some time for that board area to reach ambient temperature. Having solder mask in that area or not having it can once again influence things. Typically if you remove the solder mask you can improve the thermal conductivity between air and PCB 
and so the system should react faster to changes. Having that cutout in the PCB brings another advantage. It isolates the sensor from possible mechanical stress being induced to the die. You can have some nasty errors if there is mechanical stress applied to the sensor die inside the chip. I won't go into the details of why that happens, but you need to be aware of it and try to avoid it with better PCB design. For example, it's best if there are cutout slots around the sensor to avoid passing any mechanical stress applied to the PCB over to the sensor chip. There are also other factors that you need to consider when you want to measure ambient temperature. For example, does your finished product sit in an enclosure or not? If yes, you will need ventilation holes and you will need to think how the PCB and the enclosure is going to sit in the final operating environment. For example, if the box sits vertically, it's best if you have ventilation holes top and bottom to allow the air to naturally circulate through convection. Fresh air will be entering from the bottom and so it's best if the sensor is placed towards the bottom side of the PCB like this and this will ensure the sensor is actually measuring the temperature of the fresh ambient air which is entering your enclosure through the bottom holes. Some designs even go as far as having the sensor on an entirely different PCB which is connected somehow to the main PCB, sometimes via a flex cable or some other type of cable and so they can place it in the most ideal spot in the enclosure. But that's usually too expensive to do at hobby level or products which are made in less than 1000 units. So these were just a few practical rules that I follow whenever I have to design temperature measurements into a system. It doesn't matter if you use a digital temperature sensor or simply a thermistor. If you follow these rules, you will improve your end result. And if you'd like to read more on the subject or maybe read more on the theory side of things, Texas Instruments has a great application note on the subject, which I will link in the description below the video. Check it out, you might get some great value out of it, it's full of great illustrations. I hope you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.